My name is Anthony Barocas here for YOLO Live. I am an independent producer in Dallas, Texas. So welcome everyone around the world. Um, the topic of today's show is three cameras become nine. How do we do that? How do we get nine cameras into a YOLO Box Pro? I will show you. Uh, I have tricked it, TGE YOLO Box Pro using three angles from only one camera. Crop each part and make a new input. Yep, I can switch easily from one to another. Yep, that's exactly it. Aha, you got me. <laughs> and that is a great way to segue into our uh, talk today. So let me go right into the YOLO box. So this is the YOLO box pro. Actually, I, let me switch the in-stream group as well. I don't know. Is there a way to see how many people are watching on in-stream? I don't know. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. Well, if you're watching on the in-stream, thanks for watching. And uh, so I'm going to delete this video just to clear up the space. Done. I'm going to delete that video to clear up the space too. Go, oh, delete this image to clear up the space. Done. So I have one camera coming in. This is my camera, right? This is, I have the same camera being fed through a DA to the production YOLO Box Pro, to, to the demo YOLO Box Pro, and as you can not really see to the in-stream, but that camera you see over there, that's actually the USB camera, so it doesn't look as good. So next time, next week, uh, I bet you in-stream is going to look even better because they're going to route this camera to the in-stream too. Uh, -doop -doop -doop. So I've got this input, but if I have just this shot, it gets kind of boring after a while, which is, you know, pretty typical. So what you want to do is you want to come into here. You want to click that little icon in the top right corner. You're not going to do the chroma king. I'm already doing chroma king. That's why there's no green behind me, but we're going to do cropping. And then here... You could uh, use this and make it a little bit tighter. Da, 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 da. You're going to say fit it to the screen, which means take this crop that I made and stretch it out to fit the screen. And then we're going to say fit the screen and we're going to say done, but we're not really done yet. I want to save it as a new input. Boom. You, so you're going to edit the original. So if you have a shot, but there's something in the way and you just want to crop it out, you could edit the original so that it, the original is just this cropped input. Or you could save it as a new input so that while I'm talking, uh, let's take the output of this more directly. Here we go. So watching this screen up here, you know, I'm talking to you and then I want to say something a little bit more important. Now I'm even closer. Hey, this is great. You know, how are you doing? Stuff like that. And then now I can go back out. And I use that a lot in, you know, tutorials and stuff like that. Because, you know, when you change between things and the tone of the content changes a little bit, you might want to, you know, punch in for some, you know, because this is more serious and everything. And then after that, you come back out and, you know, so you understand what I mean. And there's, you know, more hand motions and stuff like that. Well, you, you don't have to stop at one. That's the magic here. You're going to cropping. We're going to say, go in super tight. Okay, this is crazy tight, but done. Whoop. Fit to screen. I almost forgot. Say done. Save as new. Super tight. <laughs> So now this one camera becomes three different views. Where this may actually come into more into play is if I have a shot with two people, one sitting over here and one sitting over here. Let me delete this. Done. I can take, let me delete both of these. Done. I can go in here. I can use this cropping to zoom over there, done, Oop. full screen, done, save as new, and then, sorry, go back, cropping over here, fit to screen, done, save as new. Now, you can see, if I want to highlight this person, I'm talking to you over here, and this is my thought, and then cut to this person. Hey, that's a really good idea. I think we should all do that. And then cut back to the two shot. So now all of a sudden, it's like I have a three camera shoot with one camera. And here's an idea. If you had a talk show, people around a table, from one side, you have a shot of two people. 
From the other side, you have a shot of two people. You do this. So now your two cameras become six shots. You know, so if I add another camera, I don't even have another camera here. Nope, I don't have another camera hooked up. But you can imagine taking this shot right here, having those two people on either side, each becoming their own shot. Let me see if I can get this lined up. You know, they each become the center of their own shot as well as the wide shot. So each camera becomes three. There are three HDMI inputs. Three times three is nine. That's how you get nine sources, nine individual different shots out of just three inputs. And that's the magic of the virtual cameras. And it's built in. Super easy to use, super easy to set up. You know, you can even go in there and change the shot if you want to. That's like making, you know, magic out of just a basic camera input. And that is like the really cool way to get three cameras into become nine in the Yola box. So um, that's the magic of today's show. And I, I do actually have a tech tip all about using cropping. But, you know, we wanted to cover it again because, you know, there's new people coming to the Yola box every single week. And, hey, we got to, you know, we got to talk about these topics, you know, because using them can change, you know, little bug fixes and features can be added over time. And what I did a year ago in a, in a tech video might be even better today. Mike Sabatini asks, can local video be paused or stopped without having to delete it? Technically, yes. Uh, you can set if you have a video and this is a prime opportunity to go to the pro and we'll go here. Uh, so I have two things to switch now. So we'll go in, we'll just do this. We'll go into a monitor mode and I will go like this so you can see it. And if I have a video, here's my local video one. If I go to the video, well, actually that's not video. Let me load a video video. Mm -mm -mm. Here you go. Countdown. 15 minute countdown. I got to wait till they all load. Boop, boop. 15 minute countdown. Done. Well, that was interesting. Let's load it again. So now I bring that up and play it. Now I have mine set so that when I leave it, it automatically jumps back to the beginning and, and waits. So when I cut away, you'll see it jumps back to 15. Right here. It jumps back to 15 and then it just sits there. Uh, in the settings, local video play mode, you can say have it stop at the last frame or loop. So that's what it does at the end. All right. And then switching mode. I have it resume the first frame and pause when switching. You can have it just pause. So if I set it to that and come out and I come over here and I click on it and it goes to 1459 58 and then I cut away, it's going to pause. It's not going forward but it also didn't reset. The thing you can't do is you can't manually play and pause while you're watching it. But this is about the closest you can do. It's like when you leave the video, it's gonna sit there and wait for you. It's gonna be like, and then you come back to it, it's gonna continue playing. And then when I cut away from it, it's gonna pause like those things we see in the sky. Um, and then of course your video switch, switching mode, I have my, you know, those are the three selections up there. So that is kinda a way you can pause your video without resetting it. Um, but you can't like, you can't directly touch the video playback like you can if you were doing stills, uh, a PDF or stills or images, you get the ability, let's just load an image here. So I load uh, this guy done. Uh, when I bring up an image, I get like a little controller on the screen and you don't get that with video. It'd be kind of cool if you did, but you don't. So I could, if I had more frames, I could go forward, I could go backward, I could jump to the end, I could jump to the beginning and it tells me where I am. But you don't get that with video. The only way you can control the video is by going to it and by leaving it. So you're kind of restricted in that sense with the video. I have the Yola Box Pro. My sound default is always muted. Do I always have to go in and cut the sound on? Yes. Um, I wouldn't cut the sound on. I would turn the sound on. Uh, I'd cut it off and turn it on. The 
Reason for that is because the YOLO box used to default to audio follows video is on, um, which if you use the in-stream still does. And a lot of people, myself included, as years of experience, I'd go into a show, I would forget to turn it off. And then the instant I, can, I switched to my overhead camera, all of a sudden you'd have no audio and I'd be talking here and you'd have no, I'd have no idea because I'm not listening to the show because of the echo that my audio is gone. Well, you know, enough of us begged YOLO Live to turn that off or turn the fact that it defaults to on, have it default to off. So like any audio mixer in existence, you put it on the table, you have to slide the fader up for the sound you want. In this case, you have to turn it on. That's how mixers work. You have to tell the mixer what you want it to do. But now, once I do turn my audio on, I don't have to worry about when I cut to this thing, all of a sudden the video is off and then I cut back to this thing. It stays where I put it. And that was the key thing about turning audio follows video off. There are instances where you do want it. Don't get me wrong. It is a useful tool, but by default, it, it really needs to be off. Is there a way to have all the overlay options on a different screen so it's accessible to touch on a piece of hardware that will do so all, all your overlays at once? Mm, not right now. Again, that could go back to using Bluetooth and assigning all your overlays to a keypad and you give the keypad to someone else and then they could sit there and say, okay, go graphic two, go graphic three, you know, go with the, you know, this person's name, go with that person's name. You know, that's usually what the Stream Deck and everything is used for when connected to a computer. Um, if YOLO Live can enable us to connect Bluetooth keyboards, devices, whatever, and then also, because the Bluetooth is built in, it's, it's an Android tablet, there's Bluetooth in it. You know, adding that is not a big hurdle. Turning it on and allow, or allowing us to turn it on is not the big hurdle. It's reprogramming the application so that you know, we are able to assign our own manual keystroke. So HDMI one is number one, HDMI two is number two, HDMI three is number three. Ooh, HDMI, here we go, overhead. HDMI one one is number four, HDMI one two is number five, H HDMI two one, you know, the first variant of HDMI 2 is six. The second variant of input two is seven. And then your two, your, your, your side by side, like I have right here is um, number eight. And then you can have uh, your titles. You know, if I bring up my title and that could be, you know, hey, let me add the plus sign. And then my title comes up and things like that. So there's a lot that could be done. It just takes YOLO Live to go in and first flip the Bluetooth switch so that we can access it. And secondly, go through the app and allow us to, you know, attach keystrokes to different things. So that would be great. You know, even, even to the point where it already uses a USB keyboard if you want to just, you know, a wired USB keyboard if you want to type titles and, and graphics and things like that. Well, once we're in a show, it would be really nice since the general interface, this interface has no keystroke. Keystrokes don't do anything. You could then redirect those keystrokes in this case to be doing tasks, you know, turning on audio channels, um, and then like in the sports scoreboard, which I can't, uh, in the sports scoreboard, adding scores, da, 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 turning on the time, turning off the time, changing, you know, doing different things with the sports scoreboard too. That would be really, 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 really handy. Um, so I'm right there with you. Sound is not matching with the video when I want to post edit the yellow box record on Adobe Premiere, any solution. Uh, I find the sound is usually off about two frames. And so I just select the whole thing and I shift two frames and then I'm good. One of the questions that was asked in the group was other languages. How do I get to, you know, can the, can I do titles in another language? And the answer is yes. Uh, so let us go to this 
over here. Actually, I just put it right up on the pro. And so if you're doing a title and you come over here, uh, let's do, I don't know, lower third. Boop, 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 that one looks nice. So chief support Jenny Wong. So chief support, um, you want to you wanna change your font, right? Oh, wait, not, that's not it. Do, 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 Jenny Wong. Here comes the keyboard. You hold the space bar. And then it's going to come up with all the keyboards that are installed. Now, I'm in America, so I have the English keyboard and I have Gboard. But if you are in another country, in, in, in another country, you're going to have other things that are installed. And that's where they will appear. And you will be able to select between them. So the, the trick, the hack, is to press and hold the space bar when you're in the titling part of the uh, application. So that way you can do, 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 do. This is where you can add a keyboard. You see? Albanian. So I, I don't know Albanian. I will admit that I don't know Albanian, but that is where you get access to that other material. It's, it's, uh, you're going to need access to the internet to load any keyboards or any languages that aren't already installed on there. But that is, as you can see, a very easy process to access that. There's not any there's not any real hacks that you need to do. It's it's basically designed so that you can do it, so that the end user can make it most appropriate for what they want to do. Do 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 do. Let's go back to our comments. Uh, the background image of chroma key is not bonded with the object, so that zooming can affect both the background and the image or video. Yes, absolutely, it is not. Not only is it not bonded with the image, but if you do a picture in picture on the Yolo box, so you see, I have this coffee house picture behind me. But if I click on the picture in picture, the coffee house doesn't come with what I'm doing. Uh, if you're watching on Instagram, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm just waving my hands in front of a green screen. But <laughs> um, the, the background doesn't come with the image. And interestingly enough, this is this is not unique to Yolo Box. I, I, I work on an, an application that costs over $1,000 on a computer that costs $2,000. And when you take one layered item and bring it into another layered item, it only will adjust cropping and everything on the base layer. It won't do it on all the other layers. And it's a nightmare. It, I, you, you would think that if I have this base image of me in front of the coffee house, you know, or let me get out of this so people on uh, YouTube, if I have this, you know, me in front of this background, that if I take this whole thing and move it into another input, that these two would be, as we say in the, you know, Photoshop, flattened into one thing. So if I crop it, if I do anything with it, it's doing it with me and the background. If I, you know, zoom it in or anything, it's all one piece, but that's not how vmix works that's not how photoshop works that's not how the yolo box works it can be useful because you can actually have two ver different versions of you with two different backgrounds it's pretty cool but um then it's also not useful when you want it to work so um my name is anthony barocas from yolo live i look forward to seeing you next week take care